May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Within today's scripture, there is a tension between divine revelation and the human will. In the first reading, Moses declares, on the one hand, that divine revelation is given to us by God and must be accepted as is. On the other hand, that people should take care not to forget what they have seen with their own eyes and heard with their own ears. Both the revelation of God, which comes from him, and our human experience of God matter. When we follow God's commands, we are not only like little children who are obeying their father's word. The commandments and other forms of God's divine revelation are also a source of wisdom for us, offering insight into the divine mysteries of human life. Whether we understand God's ways completely or not, when we follow God's commands, we become more like him who gave them to us. Because what God is describing in giving us his commandments is a, is a description of himself. He is always faithful to those whom he has made a covenant. He is always merciful to those who call upon his holy name. In today's gospel passage, Jesus tells us, all those of us who aspire to serve faithfully as his disciples, that everything we need to know has already been revealed. I have not come to abolish the laws, but to fulfil them. Not to abolish them, but rather to develop and complete them. Not to downgrade them, but rather to transcend them to a higher level. Jesus will show us that true observance must also be in the heart and mind. We can become obsessed with external observance of the church laws and regulations, particularly during Lent when we are encouraged to do penitential acts. But we need to remember that these acts do not stand on their own. They only have meaning if they deepen our relationship with God. In all things, our ultimate guide must be the law of love. No truly loving act can ever be sinful, although at times it may violate the letter of the law. We see a true act of love, of sorrow and of pity, in the 13th station of the cross. Jesus is taken down from the cross and given to his mother, Our Lady whose eyes have always been fixed on Jesus and whose trust has, has always been rooted in God. In the arms of his mother they have placed the lifeless body of the Son, an image of the ineffable bond of love which blossomed in the mother's heart on the day of the Annunciation and ripened as she waited for the birth of her divine son, a love which was revealed in the cave at Bethlehem and was tested already during the presentation in the temple, a love that grew deeper as Mary stored and pondered in her heart all that was happening. It is only the devotion of the centuries that has preserved the figure of the Pieta, providing Christian memory with this most sorrowful image of Mary with the lifeless body of her son in her arms. The Gospels say nothing of what she felt at that moment. Perhaps in their silence, the evangelist, the evangelist wished to respect her sorrow, her feelings and her memories, or perhaps they simply felt incapable of expressing them. Just as Moses reminds the people of Israel not to forget the things that they have seen with their own eyes and heard with their own ears, so we remember all that we have heard of Jesus' journey to the cross. We will do so with some words from Stephen Cottrell. These will be followed by a few moments of silence as we contemplate the cross and its place in the tension of divine revelation and human will. Silence. Darkness. There is a chill in the air. They have taken his body down from the cross. There is nothing left to do, nothing to say. The Sabbath is beginning. There are things to attend to, important religious observances to be kept. The crowds disperse, unsatisfied by death. Once again, it has failed to do anything to prevent their own. Or has it? I, too, amble away, wondering what I have seen and what it means and what I'm supposed to do next. There are some things in life that can only be understood by standing under. The cross is one of them. It cannot be explained away. It cannot be brushed aside. It cannot be avoided. You either have to be nailed to it yourself, carrying it with you, learning its meaning day by day and step by step, or you have to walk away and find another route through life. It will not go away, however. 
It stands at the centre of the universe and in great light, and wherever you run, you will always find yourself doused in its shadow. <laughs>